In today's show, we're going to talk about using Power Apps with Excel. So we use Excel as our data source, we'll build our first app, and then we'll just look at a couple little tricks to help you make a better app and set a foundation so we can have future videos with much more complicated stuff. But first, here's our intro. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras, those guys. And today's show is all about Power Apps and Excel. All right, this is one of our getting started videos. We're gonna use this to set some foundational stuff up so other build videos can build on it and we can get into more complex things later. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take an Excel workbook, we're gonna store it on our OneDrive uh, for business location, we're gonna then pull it down and access that from Power Apps and just have that as our data source as we write back and forth. Now when it comes to Excel, in Power Apps, right? It doesn't have to be stored in OneDrive. You could store it in, you know, something like Dropbox or Google or, uh, you know, OneDrive, the other OneDrive, you know, whatever you want to do, there's different places you can do it. But for this example, we're just going to use uh, OneDrive for business. The key with that Excel workbook is, is we're going to need to make sure it's shared. So let's just jump over to my desktop and take a look at this. So on my desktop here, I've logged into a browser. Um, you can see here I'm at the Power Apps homepage. And what we're going to do is we're going to sign in. Now, if you don't have an account, you can sign up for free. Uh, I didn't want to go through that whole process because I've got way too many accounts already, so we're going to use one of my existing accounts. So say sign in. After 15 seconds or so, here's the home page for my Power Apps. And what I'm going to look at over here is we're going to go to Apps. So these are all the apps I've built, right? There's a video right here. This one's using SharePoint as a, a video source. There's a link below if you want to watch that video. But, you know, here are the different apps I have available. And over here on the right, though, we're going to take advantage of Create an App. So when you choose create an app, now you're going to see we have some different options. So we start with your data, and this is what we're going to use. We're going to take advantage of the OneDrive for Business. Um, you can start with a blank app, or you can start with one of their app templates, which are really great, and especially in the Excel scenario, are a lot of fun to use because they use Excel workbooks for most of the template apps. So you can kind of get in there and see how they're doing some of the more complex things you might be interested in. But for today, we're going to choose just OneDrive for Business and the phone layout. Now, when you click this, what you might find is you might not have OneDrive for Business set up over here, so you might have to authenticate the first time for it. Mine's already set up, so it was no problem. I already had a connection, but if you don't, then go ahead and set up the OneDrive for Business connection. All you do is put in your username and password, and it'll link everything up for you. Right now, I don't have any Excel files, so let's fix that. So I'm going to reach over here and grab Excel. I'm going to drag it over. And so this is the Excel workbook that I created. Very complicated stuff, employee directory. I typed in a bunch of random stuff real fast. All right, but the first thing you need to learn about using Excel as a data source is that your data has to be set up as a table. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab all this, I'm gonna select it all, I'm gonna say format as a table, and I'm gonna pick an option that is hopefully not too hideous. My table does have headers, so that works. All right, that looks good. And then what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you name your table. So I'm gonna say employees, because when we reference this over in Power Apps, we have to do it by name, so you'd be better off doing that. If you switch over here to sheet two, I have another table set up. Um, and so we're not going to use this one for this video, but I wanted to have two. So format as a table. And we'll do this pretty blue. We'll say OK. And then we'll call this departments. Departments. Hit enter there. All right. And so in a later video, we'll make it, we'll pick up from there and we'll take this and we'll make this actually a selection. So we have a uh, drop down with a selection instead of people typing in the department. But that's for another day. All right. So departments looks good. Go over here, employees looks good, perfect. So let's hit save. And then we'll get rid of uh, Excel. So I'll drag this back over here. And so we wanna put this over in our OneDrive. Now I realize that you probably have your OneDrive all set up so that you don't have to, or you could just save straight from Excel, but I have so many different accounts. This account's not hooked up that way, yada, yada, yada. So I'm just gonna grab the file and drag it over here. So there's my file, and then we'll open it up just to make sure I grab the right one. That looks like that data. That looks like pretty blue. All right, we're in good shape. So let's close this up. Go back over to Power Apps. And so now that we have our data, we'll hit the little refresh icon over here. There's our employee directory, so we'll click on that. And so then now it's gonna prompt us to choose a table. And you can see I have both departments and employees, and we know we're just using employees. But if you have multiple tables and you're gonna use all of them, uh, what you wanna do is whichever table is your primary table, right? We're gonna read and write the data too. So like in my case, employees, we're updating and maybe departments and titles and those type of things, those ones would all be supporting tables. 
then you'd want to choose for your first one uh, the table you want to write to. So in our case, employees. That way, Power Apps kind of sets that up as a default for you and does a lot of work for it. You'll see just a second. So we'll click employees. We'll say connect. And this is one of the magics of Power Apps. It's going to go build us a fully functional app based on that data. It's going to figure it out. It's going to look at it. Twist, do, 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 do. So we didn't have to do any work. And now we have this awesome app. Let's zoom in a little bit. All right. And so to take a look at this, the first thing you want to do after you come in here is you want to hit the play button right up here. This lets you preview the app. So you can see that, all right, I've got my employees listed here. If I click on Luke and finance here, view his item details, there it is. I've already got an edit screen built in here. It's pretty cool stuff, right? If we take Luke, for example, let's, uh, let's edit Luke. And let's just change his department, or his favorite, eh, let's change his title from kid to kid number two. I don't know. I'm not very creative sometimes. But we'll say check. You can see the little dots going by. We'll go back to the home page here. And we'll close out. Which gets us back there. And if we go over to our OneDrive and click on employee directory, we should now see sheet one. There's Luke. He's now kid two, right? So we're already reading and writing data back and forth to our Excel workbook, and we did nothing. Pretty cool. All right, close that out. The rest of the way, you just have to trust me it's happening. I'm not going to keep showing you that uh, it's actually doing it. So if we go back to our Power Apps, we can see, all right, they set this up for us. Pretty nice. We could customize it, though, right? So employee, but employee details. I don't know. Just easy little type in. Boom. Now, if you look at this, though, it's not really showing the data I want, right? So we've got things like executive and purple and I don't know. I, I don't really like the way they did this. So no problem. Pretty easy for us to fix because this data is being displayed by a control called a browse gallery. So if we click on browse gallery, you can see up here where the items are coming from. We'll talk about that in a second. But you can see that over here on the right, and right, probably should move my face so I don't block anymore. So whoop. all right, I moved. Uh, but so now if you click on layout here, you're actually going to see that it shows us where is it getting the data from, which of the layout options it's using. And there's several different templates you can choose from, but we're going to stick with the default. And then you can choose what shows up as title, subtitle, and body. And so for title, in, my, in this case, right, I think I want something a little more personal than department. How about their name? Uh, subtitle can be email, and we'll leave the body the favorite color, right? So just like that, right now it's Nicola, Nicola at boldzebras.com, purple. Pretty good, uh, but Power App's pretty easy to customize. So let's take this a step further, right? We need Nicola's full name. She's not Nicola, she's Nicola Young. Right? I went through a lot of effort to make her last name Young, so we should reflect that here. So what I'm going to do is I clicked on the field, and you can see that the text in that field is represented by this item, so the current one we selected in the gallery, and then the first name field. All right. But it's real easy for us to add on to that, right? We can just add ampersand, do a quote, space, quote, another ampersand, and then we'll do this item dot last name, right? And I'm using the uh, keyboard there to select things so I don't have to type too much. And so look at that. Just like that, with a few uh, clicks of the mouse and uh, the keyboard, now we've got a little more of a proper, right? Nicole Young, Nicole at Bold Zebras. Um, so let's, let's do something even cooler. So right now you can see her favorite color is uh, purple. So we could just update this and say something like, um, and we won't put it in quotes because it's just regular text. We'll say favorite color, like so. Oh, let's put a space though. Or right, let's do this. We'll do a colon, a space, like that. Right, a little format, make it nice. And then we'll put our ampersand. So this item, favorite color. So that's nice, but you know what? Color is color. I want to format this thing. I want to make it pretty. No problem. So that's our text. So over here, though, on the left, if we hit this drop down, this is all of the different um, properties for this particular control. And we can set these kind of as we need. So we can scroll through these. I encourage you to scroll through them, check them out, see what settings are there. But right now, if we click on color, we can see that right now color is just set to color RGBA, blah, 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 which turns out it's pretty much a black, right? Well, I don't understand RGBA, but I do understand colors. And I know that the color that we want is um, the color that is her favorite color, right? Wouldn't that be kind of neat? So what we could do is something a little different. And we could say, you know what? We want to do a color value. So color value is a function. 
and it returns a color based on the string you provide it. And for the string though, we're gonna say this item dot favorite color. Do something like that. And look at that, let's preview. And so now favorite color, purple, blue, red, and we, we've done the coloring for it, right? Probably not something you'd ever actually do, but this is just to kind of get your brain thinking around two concepts I want you to think about. One is that with Power Apps, I don't want you to rebuild the boring stuff that you had before, right? We had boring Excel or like my InfoPath users had these uh, InfoPath forms that essentially like pieces of paper. Don't build that, build an experience, right? So use all the fancy controls. We're not gonna cover them today, but there's a lot of different controls, especially if you just go here to insert, you know, we've got um, media controls. We've got all types of different um, controls like sliders and toggles and things like that. Use those to create an experience that your users wanna have, right? You're gonna need a lot more design skills to make really awesome power apps, which is good. You like learning new things, so learn some design stuff and make things cool. So that's where something like, you know, getting your head wrapped around, hey, I've got the color here, why don't I change the screen color to it? You know, or on all of these options, you know, we can put in static data, like it was there, the color, or if we don't wanna do static data, we can always do things like if statements, right? So if, um, if the title is boss, you know, make the person's name in bold, or, you know, there's just any type of crazy ideas you can have that makes it a better experience for users. Those are available in Power Apps. So I encourage you as you learn Power Apps to think outside the box, right? Okay, so there you go. There's my little uh, sideshow trick for the day. We made that colored. So let's go another layer deep. So one of the things that also is very confusing when you first start with Power Apps is how to navigate the screens. So my best tip to you here, open up the preview. All right, we're happy with this screen. Yay, go into this screen. All right, well, this one's still showing legacy fields that we don't care about. It's in a weird order. I wanna edit this screen. If you navigate to the screen and then X out, when we get back to the design pane, we're on that screen. So I didn't have to figure out where it was. I can see now it's highlighted over here. So it is actually detail screen one. And so then there's a detail form one. That is the part that is showing here and controlling what we see. So I clicked on that over here on the right now under layout, I have different layout options. So where did the data come from? Um, here's all the different layouts, vertical or horizontal and what fields show up. So what I might do here is I might say, you know what, I don't want the legacy field at all, so I'm gonna deselect that, so that gets rid of it. And then now I wanna kinda of do some sorting here. So I'm gonna do first name and last name, kinda of push those up. We'll bring department down. So that looks a little better. Now, we're smart kids though, right? We know how to customize this stuff and make it a little nicer. So let's, let's do some simple customizations and then we'll do some a little more advanced. So let's take this one. Now first name, notice the little card and it's locked. So if we go to advanced, you can see that by default in a form like this, all of the controls are locked. It's up to us to say, all right, I really do wanna edit that. I don't wanna make accidentally edit it. I do wanna edit it, so I'm gonna unlock that. And now I can change all this stuff. So for example, I can come in here and say, instead of first, you know, percent X, whatever that is, name, I can just change this to first name. Boom, so just like that, now the form looks a little nicer. Um, also what you might do here, we got snap to columns, let's change this to two. So here you can see that auto formatted everything into two columns. That's good, but her email address doesn't fit in two columns, no problem, it's a snapper. Grab this guy, slide it over, it automatically snaps to fill, filling two columns. So now we've got first name, last name, email, and so we've kind of done a little sorting uh, for ourselves. Also, if you wanted to, if you want to combine first name and last name into one card again, right? We showed you how to do that previously. You could do that. We can, uh, let's fix last name here real quick because that looks real bad. So last name, boom, you know, employee, right? And we could change this to employee details. I don't know, something of that state. Um, but there you go. So with a couple of clicks, a couple of this, a little that, we were able to do it. You know, in a later video, I'll show you how to send it, put, add a button to email this information over to someone, right? We'd add a button on this page, no problem, because these pages are all customizable. So we'll do our preview, that looks good. We'll go back, uh, let's check out my record, right? So we're looking good, we're making our app a little nicer. You know, it worked, it was fully functional, but we're just trying to make a little better experience. So now let's close out of this, or no, let's not close out of this, let's go in here and let's edit this. So now if we edit this item, 
Oh man, we're back to another ugly screen again. No problem, hit the X. We scroll over here, we can see edit screen one's already selected for us. This one's also made up of an edit form. And the edit form's interesting though because the edit form actually has two purposes. One is for editing data, but also if we create new data, that's going to be done here as well. So when you do things like when you're thinking about what goes up here in the title text, maybe this is where we have an if statement that says if the form is in edit mode, then say edit Shane, right? And if, if the uh, form is in new mode, say add an employee. You know, we have those type of flexibilities, right? Because we can insert functions up here in the text field. I'm not gonna do it, we could. Here we'll click on the edit form again. We'll go back to the properties. And so then here's our layout. And then we'll do the same type of drill again, right? We'll drag first name and last name up. We'll drag department down. We will get rid of legacy field because we didn't need that in our app anyway. You know, like when I do this with SharePoint, I get rid of the, you know, I don't want to, you can't edit the modify and create date anyway, so I get all those off the screen, even though they're here by default. Boom. So and we could do the same process again around cleaning up first name and last name. You know, we could do the two columns, we could do four columns, whatever we want to do there. But I think that gets you through the mindset of what it takes to create an app. Um, and just to kind of show you the last little steps, we'll say play, we'll close out of that. Oh, that's not what I meant to. We'll go here, let's uh, X out of editing Shane, we'll go back to the home page. Now, the last little thing I wanted to do here was the fact that this page is sorting, but I don't really know what it's sorting by or how it's sorting. So let's take a look at that. And so if we go here and you click on Browse Gallery 1, you can see the items is actually being presented by using the sort by column. And the sort by columns is actually using the search function to take advantage of what you type in this box. Okay, so that's what's getting the list of data. We're gonna skip over that part for the moment. So all of this. And then the second parenthesis, or second item here in the commas is going to be what field are we sorting by? And so we can see we're sorting by department. That is not what I want. I wanna sort by first name. So we can start typing in first. And then now that we typed in that, we can sort or scroll down and there's first name just like that, minimize out, and boom, now we are sorting all of our data, right? We've got multiple data here. We're sorting it by the first name field. It's a very easy change for us to make. In a future video, we're gonna go over kind of more details about how that works. Uh, there's already a video, it's linked down below, that explains how this little button works, right? This button just changes the sort order from uh, ascending to descending, which to me was like, oh yeah, that's probably really simple. Turns out there's like three new concepts that you learn when you go in and break down how this form works. And that's really what I like to do, right? Is I take these power apps, these default ones, and I just go figure out how these different buttons work. And that's how I learn about new functions and uh, procedures and power apps. Pretty cool. Okay, so let's finish up. And so to finish up, we need to save our power app. So we're gonna click over here on file. And we're gonna go to app settings first, and we're gonna name this um, Shane's Excel video right that's the name of my video i know or the name of the app uh the icon here we'll make this one red and we'll make it a a house why not so real easy for us to give it kind of a custom feel you could add a description and where these descriptions and icons also really come to play is in a minute when we look at the fact that you have an app on your phone that's where the um you want these to show up and be able to users figure out what it is it does so with all that done, um, we also have a screen here for screen size and orientation. Probably a bad idea to change now because we designed for the uh, phone the phone form factor. Uh, but you could, you can also design for web page uh, form factors or mobile device, uh, like you know surfaces and those type of things. So, but this has all been designed, so we're gonna leave all this alone. And now we're gonna hit save. And so we're gonna save it to the cloud, change Excel video and hit save. And save is really important, right? Because now that I've saved my app going forward, it will auto save every few minutes for me. But until you save it the first time manually, there is no auto save. So really, when I first started this video, step one should have been hit save, right? You should save early and save often to keep yourself out of trouble. All right, now that it's done saving, we're gonna click on share this app. And so then this is where I have an interface for sharing and publishing this app out to other users. So I'm gonna publish it out to my boss, Nestor. Just like that, he has the ability to use it. We'll hit save. And so you get the nice little working on it message and it's going to save. 
So where this works out really good is, so if Nestor has a Power Apps app installed on his phone, for example, the next time he logs in, this app is just gonna show up. And so then from there, he can go in and use the experience right there on his mobile app and have a lot of fun and be like, oh, I guess I should give that Shane guy a race because he did a good job making me an app. Um, and actually, so you know what we'll do is I will log into it here on my phone and then anywhere after you know three or five minutes or so, it'll show up here on my list of apps. Just by logging in, it's already on my phone. And then I will uh, do some screen recording here and give you guys a nice little you know show uh, demo of how the app works on my phone. Uh, so that's what you're watching right now on the show, right? So I can go in here, I swipe over, okay, I got that. And so then now my app is loaded, so I can scroll with my finger. I can click on uh, Chewy Young. There's his details. I could do an edit, type in, pretty cool. Go back, go back, hit the plus. Create a new employee. So lots of cool things that we could take advantage of here with the, uh, the apps. All right. So I think that gets you started with Excel for Power Apps. Hopefully you've uh, enjoyed this. If you have any questions, you want to learn about different things, you wonder why I did this or that, or you have suggestions of places you want me to go, right? You see a rabbit hole, right? Go down that rabbit hole. Leave me comments below. Always happy to help. And if I can do anything to help you, just reach out to me through the comments, or you can always hit me up on Twitter, hit the subscribe button. You know how, you know the drill. All right. Well, thanks and have a great day. Hey, it's me again. Just a reminder, if you don't mind, click the old subscribe button over here. That always helps me out. Or if you want to work together, you can always hit me up through the bold zebras. Or if really what you want is some more of these power app videos, which is probably what you want, then the playlist is somewhere on the screen here. All right. Thanks. Have a great day.